This vitamin like molecule has been used in stage 5 patients who wanted to avoid being tied to a machine. Here's what you need to know about it. Catherine here. I've been helping kidney disease patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And today, I want to focus on what really matters when it comes to preventing kidney failure. To avoid ending up tied to a machine for life. Because we know today that kidney disease patients in all the stages have the chance not just to stop the decline of their kidney function, but also to improve. It's not the stage of kidney disease that matters, but how well you treat your kidneys. And today's video is all about what really matters when it comes to avoiding what some call the Big D machine. And I've received many questions from you guys on this very subject, and I want to give you answers. So let's start immediately with a question that's going to be interesting for a lot of people. I have heard that people are being taken off of the big T machine with coenzyme Q10. Is this for real? Can you actually stop the big D machine once you started? Now, this is a bit of a delicate topic because yes, there are actually cases documented in medical literature of stage 5 CKD sufferers who were treated with CoQ10. The goal was to completely stop their need for renal replacement therapy or the big D machine, like you call it. It actually happened. Now, this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial we are talking about. It was conducted on 48 test subjects in the treatment group, plus other 49 in the placebo group. All of them in stage 5 doing renal replacement therapy already. So, they are given CoQ10 in a pretty standard dose, by the way, and the incredible happens. In just 8 weeks, 9 patients were able to completely stop renal replacement therapy. Incredible! So, should you take CoQ10 to avoid the big D machine? Well, yes, but don't expect this kind of results. Because you see, this trial was conducted on some very specific test subjects. Researchers here recruited patients that were still making urine, alright? So, they still had some kidney function, even if they were doing RRT, which is really different from having no residual kidney function at all. Now, I actually recommend taking Cocutane anyway. This is one of the most powerful antioxidants out there, a great way to protect the kidneys. And I recommend Cocutane especially to people taking a stand or a beta blocker or in general, to those over 50. This is because taking stents or beta blockers or being over 50 will make your natural production of CoQ10 decrease. And that's bad for the kidneys. We want to avoid having too low levels of this antioxidant. Up next, another very interesting question. This one is from Lydia Asante and she asks, is horsetail good for a CKD stage 3A patient as a diuretic? Thank you. Okay, a very interesting question. That's also in topic with today's video. Because you see, prescription diuretics are a very important part of the treatment for CKD especially, but not just in the advanced stages. But these prescriptions also come with serious side effects, unfortunately. This is why you guys are asking me. And what about natural alternatives? Are they safer than prescriptions? Well, in the case of horsetail, the answer is yes, but with caution. I'll explain. Horsetail, also known as puzzle grass or with the scientific name Equisatum arvensi, is a plant that has been used to treat kidney problems since the time of the ancient Romans. It is safe on its own. It's actually a gentle diuretic that will help the kidneys, removing excess fluids and unwanted toxins from the body. It's also known to lower blood sugar levels. It seems all good on paper, right? But there is a reason why some doctors may discourage you from using this plant as a diuretic. 
The reason is because they may have already prescribed you a diuretic. And this would mean that you could now be taking too many diuretics and this can cause a lot of problems such as dehydration, too high or too low potassium and sugar levels and more. Not something we want. What to do then? Do not take this supplement without your doctor's approval. If you want to take it, make sure a nephrologist or a naturopath is double checking that the total amount of diuretics you take is not excessive. And always make sure you are drinking enough water when you take a diuretic. Another issue we will have with diuretics in general is lowered vitamin B1 levels. So make sure you are also supplementing this vitamin. Because horse tail can be safe if you take it the right way. Up next, another very interesting question. Okay guys, since today's video is all about avoiding the big D machine, there is a very pertinent question I wanted to answer. This is from Mark Galinas, he asks. This question was posted in my recent video about the bioartificial kidney. Now, for those of you that don't know about the bioartificial kidney, well, it's a big, big source of hope for people with kidney disease. Because, you see, researchers from the University of California, San Francisco are developing a solution to end stage kidney failure that doesn't involve being tied to a machine. The bioartificial kidney is an implantable organ made both from human tissue and artificial parts that it's going to be able to perform the function of a human kidney. It will only be powered by the human body and it will guarantee that a stage 5 patient will stay healthy on the long term. It's going to be just like receiving a normal kidney for a transplant but with one big difference. The receiver will not need to take medicines to prevent rejection like transplant receivers do. Now to answer Mark's question, when are they going to start the human trials? Today, the kidney project is in the preclinical development stage of the bioartificial kidney, which means they have prototypes that actually work, right? And this is really amazing. They completed the production of some working units of the bioartificial kidney and they are testing these units in healthy animals. But they still need to increase the filtrating ability of the bioartificial kidney before they can request FDA approval for human trials. They are trying to make it powerful enough, in short, to replace a human kidney. And you know what they need in order to achieve this? Well, money. Researchers from the Kidney Project told the press that they need $10 million to complete this process and start testing the device on humans. Recently, they were able to secure $1 million thanks to an organization called Kidney X. This will for sure make the goal of testing the artificial kidney on human closer, maybe in 2026 already? Up next, a question about vitamins. This is a question user Reg Reg asked in my recent video, they ask. I love sweet potatoes, should I stop because they are rich in vitamin? And there is also a potato emoji in here, <laughs> very cute. Yeah, Reg Reg must really love sweet potatoes and I get it, potatoes are amazing, not just for their taste but also nutritionally. But are potatoes too rich in vitamins and thus dangerous? As you probably know already, vitamins are key for kidney health, especially people in the advanced stages must be very careful with vitamin intake. You are supposed to supplement them and you are also supposed to be careful not to take too many of the wrong vitamins. Now some good news for Reg Reg. Sweet potatoes don't have any vitamin that can accumulate and become dangerous. You can enjoy them without problems. The only issue here could be potassium, so make sure your levels are in the right range. There are actually only a handful of foods that can have vitamin levels so high, they will give you trouble. I'm especially referring to liver from certain fishes. All the other foods are safe when it comes to vitamins. Obviously, there are supplements that can have too high levels of vitamins and that's 
what you should be careful with. Up next, another very interesting question about the kidney diet. This is from Rhoda R and they ask, Hi Catherine, my doctor just told me my kidney function shows it's lower than normal. What plant-based protein can I eat since beans are causing my gut to flare up? Trying to get healthier, thank you. Hello Rhoda, I'm sorry to hear your kidney function is lower than normal, but I'm glad to see you are taking care of the problem. Switching to a plant-based diet is a very good strategy to help both your kidneys and your gout issue. To answer your question, what plant-based protein are safe for gout, there are a few sources of protein that are low in purines and safe for gout. Mainly nuts and seeds, but also whole grains and soy-based products such as tofu and tempeh. Now the list of foods that are safe for gout also includes legumes. Legumes are not considered high in purines and are usually recommended because they have many, many health benefits, including an anti-inflammatory effect that's very helpful against gout. So my advice here will be to reduce your portions if you are 100% sure that beans are causing you problems, but don't completely avoid them. Also keep in mind that there are foods that are a million times worse for gout. Foods to always avoid with gout include meat, organ meat especially, but also shellfish and other types of fish rich in mercury, alcohol in general, and foods and beverages with added sugar. Eating any of these foods is a million times more likely to cause gout flares than beans, so be very careful, especially with added sugar, which is very, very easy to find in a million of packaged foods, also those that don't taste sweet. Be careful and read the labels, make sure you are not getting dangerous additives in your food. And since we are talking about food items that are dangerous for the kidneys, here's another question on this topic I want to answer. This is from Florence Thamp and they ask, what type of fish to avoid, all or some, salmon, tuna, etc? Now they don't mention if they have kidney issues in their comment and that's an important thing to know in order to answer this question. Because you see, if your kidneys are working well, you don't really need to avoid fish. Fish can be a healthy part of the diet of someone with fully working kidneys, but not for kidney patients, unfortunately. You see, the issue here is protein and phosphorus. If your GFR is below 60 or stage 3A kidney disease, it means your kidneys are not able to filter enough toxins from your blood. This is a problem because now scores such as uremic toxins, nitrogen, phosphorus and excess acid will start to accumulate, which is very bad for your health. It's what drives kidney disease progression. We need to avoid this toxin overload. But where are these toxins coming from? Well, mainly from protein metabolism, and all fish is rich in protein, all right? There are no safe types of fish for CKD patients. All fish is too rich in protein and phosphorus for a renal diet. Same for meat, dairy, and animal-based foods in general. This is why today, the cornerstone of the treatment for kidney disease is the plant-based diet. And by the way, guys, if you want to know more about this topic, my recent video up here is for you. And since we are talking about food items you should be careful with, here's another question from you guys I wanted to answer. Robert Consignado asks, my potassium went up eating dates. Okay, not really a question, but I still want to give a word of advice here. Now dates are awesome. I've been recommending them recently because a meta-analysis tells us that dates can actually help people with diabetes improving their blood sugar levels, which is amazing. As we can see here, eating dates can help reduce both fasting plasma glucose and postprandial plasma glucose in people with diabetes. Now dates are not considered high in potassium, but we must keep in mind that one cup of chopped dates still has the same potassium of three bananas. So eat them, but in moderation. 
Yes, you are not supposed to eat too many of them. You see, dates are especially good for you if you just eat a couple of them with a meal. That's how you are going to get all the benefits. And guys, if you want to know more about foods that can really help, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye!